My name is Kain Chan, the Tech Pro, and this is going to be tutorial 27 of our Spring Boot tutorials. And today we are going to be talking about using H2 database. If you are following the procedure in the website, you see that I may have skipped maybe two lessons, and this is for a reason. We are going to get back to it. And today we are going to actually add H2 database uh, into our application so that we'll be able to save data to the database, be able to retrieve this data, and be able to modify this data as well. Now, a little about H2 database. H2 database is an in-memory database. So this is a memory that is written in Java and it resides in the class path and deployed along with the application. Well, before I continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. And also, if you have challenges following my lessons, leave me a comment in the, in the comment box below this video and I'm going to get back to you. So H2 database is very good. I'm not going to be uh, reading all this in my website. You can read it and understand. But one thing about it is it's very easy, easy to work with. It's lightweight and it's also very, very fast. Of course, it stays in the, in, in the memory and not in the disk. Again, it's open source. Just a brief reminder of the application we are working with and the architecture of this application. Now we are building a social API. So this social API allows a user to go to the browser, uh, make a post. This post goes to the REST controller. From the REST controller, call the business service. From the business service to the repository. Repository is like the interface with the data store. So this repository, this time we are using CRUD repository, which actually extends JPA repository. And we wrote a repository class to extend CRUD repository. So I think it will be clear. So let's see. So the data store this time, this is where we are talking about. We are going to be using H2 database. Interesting thing about H2 database is it gives us a GUI. So you can see the H2 uh, GUI. Uh, we are going to build this right now and see how we can actually view our data uh, right here in this GUI. All right, so I'm going to just go back so the first thing we want to do is to add the dependency in the pom.xml, the dependency that controls the H2 database or helps, gives us access to H2 database functionality. So I'm going to simply copy it and open my pom.xml. I'm going to look for a space and then I'm going to paste it in the dependency section. All right, so let me just do some cosmetic stuff. So, so I'm going to save so that it will be able to download the jars for H2. So you can see it's building the workspace is completed. So I'm going to save it. I've saved. Now, there are things we need to add to configure this application to work with H2. So the first thing is there are three lines. One is enable H2 console, uh, set the data source platform, and also give the data source a name. Or a URL. So that I've done here. So I'm going to, sorry, I'm, I'm going to just shift this a bit so that you can see exactly. So the name of the database is Social API. So I'm going to just copy and paste. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste paste this in the application in the application properties file. So uh, okay, maybe I'll just I'll paste it here. Maybe I'll, I'll Maybe this hibernate. Well, let's just leave it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to now run this application and see if I'm able to access the H2 console. So I'm going to um, I'm going to run it at this point. All right, so we have these errors. Of course, I'm telling, I'll tell you where it came from. And that was what I was trying to avoid and I see we are going to skip some lessons. So I'm going to simply go to the repository. I'm going to comment. Uh, I'm going to comment. Because if you go to the error, the, the error, error, error uh, trace, it says error creating uh, entity invocation method fails many to one and stuff like that. All right. So. unknown entity location okay. so if I if I go back to the main Java I'll go to location I'm not sure I actually annotated the location correctly so let me shift out this a bit 
So I'm going to go to location and I'm going to open it. So you can see it's not annotated with the authenticity annotation. So I'm going to just say append, sorry, entity annotation. And then the ID is going to be at ID annotation. I'm going to save it and I'm going to say control shift O and everything is fine. I, I, I will have to also relaunch it and see what we have. So this time we also have another site of error. So it says student controller, or student service, um, so on, student repository. So the problem is actually coming from the student. I don't know this student repository is actually not part. Let's see. So we have student, student. So let's let's go to the student and. Okay, you can see it's not annotated as well, so I'm going to annotate it with an entity annotation and ID, I'm going to annotate it with the ID annotation, okay? I'm going to save everything and I'm going to Control shift o to import the necessary namespaces and I'm going to relaunch the application again. Alright, let's see what we've got here. So this time we have Tomcat started at port 8080 and everything actually went very well. So the basic thing is know how to debug your pro uh, program, how to correct errors. So at this point we, uh, we forgot to put an entity annotation in the entities and that is why we have this. So let me now go to to visit the to access the H2 console, simply go to http colon slash uh, localhost or uh, port 8080 and is head to console okay so you can see that this is head to console we've been able to assess it that's quite interesting now the next thing we want to do uh, is to now can try to look at if I have the steps there okay I'm simply going to take out this from here Okay, anyway, you can look at the steps later. Um, I'm simply going to, just give me a second. I, want, I actually want to keep the procedure side by side. Okay. Okay, this is where we are. Hey, to console, we've displayed it. And the next thing, I'm going to try to test the connection. And you can see it says test was successful. And I'm going to now click connect. When I click on connect, it opens up the H2 console uh, window proper. So now in this H2 console, you can see that we have all the entities like the tables have been created for us. This is amazing. We did not create any table in the database. We simply created the classes and now it creates all the tables for us out of the box, straight up, everything created. If you drop down on this table, you can see that it has names, the, the name of the columns has been specified clearly with the ID. Okay, you can see Raka not null, meaning that it recognizes it as a primary key. All right, so this is basically how H2 works. So we have added H2 to our database. Now, if I go to, let's take for instance, location, and I select, nothing shows up. I don't know if, uh, maybe I'll quickly show you how to add uh, items to the H2 database from initial items to the H2 database. Of course, if you click at the you can add, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to simply create a file. So just go to, let me just make some room here. Just go to SRC resources, SRC main resources here, and just create a file and call it SQL, create a file. And call it, I want to call it data.sql, but you can actually give it any name. So say finish. So I'm going to simply open it. Uh, open with. Open with maybe test editor. Okay, so you can see it opens in test editor. So I'm simply going to say insert into 
location values. Now I need to specify the ID and the name of and the and the name. So Budapest because I'm in Budapest now. Budapest Hungary. And then I add a second location. So let me copy and paste. That's the second one. So two. And then let's say a place in Nigeria. All right. Okay, so I'm going to save and I'm going to relaunch it. Now, App Spring will automatically run this query for me and put this data, run this in SAP queries and put this data into the location database. So it's a way to initialize your database to set up the initial data for your database. So I'm going to just click on this place to relaunch it. It shuts down and it's going to start up again. Okay. So hmm. So we have error. Mm, let's see. So it says entity factory failed to run the script location nested exception statement in certain to location values. So you can see should be values, not value. So I'm going to save. As a good programmer, debugging skills is very, very important for you. So knowing how to debug is actually more important than knowing how to write program. Everybody can just read the programming materials and learn how to write. But knowing how to solve a problem, that is the main thing. So at this point, you can see that Tomcat actually started on port 8080. So you can see it started perfectly well. I'm going to go back to assess the H2 console. Uh, let me see. So at this point, I'm simply going to click on this button here. I'm going to click on it to just reconnect. So I'm going to connect. And at this point, if I click on location and just run it, you can see that it adds two items to the, to the location, to the location uh, table. So, so the next thing we are going to do, we are going to actually write more queries to initialize the items in our database, the tables in the database. But the question is, what columns are in the, in, let's say, in the user database, what column is there for location? So if we open it, we can see, if I say, let's say run, is empty for sure. Sorry, uh, let me just delete this. So let's open, let's try to see what is here. So you can see location ID. The question is, where did we define location ID? Nowhere. What we define in the in the user class is just location, not location ID. But this is smart enough to know that the relationship between the user and the location is the location ID. So in the next class, we are going to actually see how it works. So why I introduce H2 database is so that we can actually be working on a GUI instead of to be making REST calls using a REST web client. So I'm going to stop here. I'd like to try to remind you to subscribe. If you don't subscribe, also like. Leave me a comment if you have challenges. And also, um, I'd like to say you are really doing well. Because if you come up to this tutorial, tutorial 27, it means you've really done great. And I'm really proud of you. And we'll see you in the next tutorial.